Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. We've all heard the saying, big lures catch big fish, and that's absolutely true a good part of the time. Now we all like using hoochies, and you know, mostly we use hoochies that are one and a half to two inches long. Well, what if we used big hoochies? Would we catch bigger fish? Sometimes, absolutely. Um, so I'm gonna share with you today a hoochie you probably haven't seen that I use for landlock kings, uh, Mackinac, and big trout, and it's not even a trout bait. It's a rock cod bait. We're actually pea line, we're talking about these pea line sunrise squid. They call it a lingcod bait, and I have absolutely seen lingcod caught in these things and lots of rockfish, but I've never seen anyone other than me use them for trout or landlocked kings. Here's how I rig them. Let me show you one. Got kind of an angled bench here. I sat that down and shot up on the ground. Anyway, here's my favorite color. It's kind of a clear UV kind of deal. And these are about, I don't know, they're about three inches long. Maybe I should look on the package. They are, doesn't say. They're about three inches long. They're about, they're about as long as my index finger, a little bit shorter. And uh, it's a bulky bait. It's not super hollow. There's a lot of body to it. And of course it's got the skirt there. So here's how I rig them up. I take a, uh, a heavy fluorocarbon leader. And it's important for it to be heavy because this, you know, obviously this squid has no action. So whatever action it has has to be transmitted by the dodger. So what I've got, I've got a section of 20 pound fluorocarbon line. Don't worry about the weight. The fish can't see fluorocarbon and you want a good stiff piece of line. Plus we're fishing for big fish. So, you know, upsize the line a little bit. So all I've done here is I have a number four red owner treble hook there. I tied that on using a Pelomar knot and I have a good size bead on there. The bead is just gonna provide a little bit of space to get the hook back, just a little bit. Now when we look at the squid, let me see if I can hold this up to the camera. There is a hollow, I don't know if you can see that, but kind of take my word for it. There is, I probably can see that. There's a hollow opening there but it doesn't go all the way through the squid. So here's what you need to do. You need to have a bait needle. It's a pea line bait needle. Everybody should have a bait needle. They just come in handy um, for rigging different kinds of bait. Take the needle, insert it in that hole in the squid. Whoa. There we go. And just pass it out through the little guy's head. So just like that, pass it straight through him. There's kind of a cavity in there, so it, it follows right through. So pull that almost all the way down. Then take your leader with the hook on it and pass the leader. And I haven't tied a loop in this yet. I'm going to tie a loop in this there. But pass the leader through the eye of that bait needle like that. Just kind of pull it down so you got plenty of, plenty of line to work with. And then just pull that through. Here it comes, just pull that through, just like that. Try not to pull the hook into your hand, that's something I would do. Now we're done with the bait needle, put that back down here. And now we're just gonna slide that squid, I'm sure you can see what I'm doing here. Slide that squid down, pull that bead up in to the, uh, the skirt, kind of arrange the skirt so everything looks right. There we go. Oh, the skirt's a little messed up. Still, so let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm very particular about my baits. So there we go. All right. So now, let's put this over here. You can see that treble is sitting. If I pull that line all the way up in there, that treble is sitting right at the end of the skirt. So a fish comes up nipping at it, um, it's gonna get hooked. And that's a theme you see with me rigging baits. I like my hook either right at the back of the bait when I'm rigging them, or a little bit behind it. But in this case, I got a treble. And I know if I'm fishing for kings, they are notorious missers. I like to use trebles when I'm fishing for kings or I like to get a hook well behind the bait because they'll come in and they, they often miss. I don't know why, but it uh, seems to me Mackinac and trout, 
they're much more accurate in their attack but kings not so much so i like to have that hook right at the back trebles are great or if you're going to use singles get that hook out behind there if you like using singles put a couple more beads get an octopus hook out here it'll work it'll work great but i like to use the treble it doesn't have to be red i went with red so what you want to do you want to run this you know i'm going to use a six inch dodger so i'm going to put this thing back about probably 14 15 inches i'm just going to take double my line over do a double you know i think this is called a surgeon's loop but anyway i just double that through there draw that down now here's kind of a good tip always looking for something to cut line and stuff with well get these at the paint store they cost like nothing you always have a sharp blade that way so i just grabbed that like that trim that fluorocarbon off now what am i going to fish that behind well i like to use a six inch dodger dodger of your choice this is my favorite uh, or at least one of my favorite king salmon dodgers it is a silver horde gold star six inch drop the bait um, it is a silver horde gold star six inch chrome on chrome dodger um, snap that on there close that up that has a nice stout snap on it anyway rigged and ready for action uh, you want to lube that up for uh, with a bunch of Procure, you know, scent of your choice, some kind of bait fish scent. But that is a dandy big fish rig, and I guarantee you, you're going to be the only guy out on the trout or salmon lake that's fishing lingcod baits and catching trout and salmon on them. So anyway, that's a great tip. That's a great big fish bait. I don't run it every day, but uh, when I'm out, I'm out looking for big fish. I'm up at Tahoe. I've caught a lot of Mackinac on that at Tahoe. I've caught Kings on that at Shasta, Kings on that at Oroville. And I was actually out with uh, the late Alan Bonslet, the old owner of the Fish Sniffer magazine one day, and we're out at Folsom Lake. And uh, we're fishing away, and uh, he had never caught a landlocked king. And we were actually out there to film some bass guys, but they weren't going to be done until like noon. So we're out there, one of my big sponsored Willie boats, and we're trolling around. And I got all my usual stuff out, and uh, I dropped one of these down there. And he's all, You think you're going to get a hit on that? I said, Probably not, but if we get hit, it's going to be something big. So, troll for a little while, and I look over. And the rod is still loaded like it's in the downrigger, but the line is like way over there. And I'm like, Alan, 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 fish on, fish on, fish on. Well, typical Folsom, he reels it in, 28 inch king on that bait right there. Only bite we got all day. Typical Folsom Lake, but that is by far the biggest landlocked king I ever got. I don't know what it weighed. I 28 inches, 8, 9 pounds, something like that. Filled up our ice chest, I'll tell you that much. And that came on that P-Line Rockfish Squid. So, Alan was a believer, and, well, I was already a believer, but I was a double believer. So, anyhow, pick some of those up, put it behind a big dodger, get some action to it, put some scent on it, and uh, get ready to yell fish on. Let me show you that package one more time. Look like this. And I've seen these called a couple different things. In this package, they're called Sunrise Squid, but um, I looked them up online a little while ago and they were called Bulb Squid. B U L B, bulb like light bulb. So, anyway, get some big squid, use them like your big hoochies, and uh, get ready to catch a big fish. This is Cal Kellogg. I'm signing off. Thanks for supporting the channel. Um, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and I'll be right back here in the School of Fishing, uh, sharing more fishing tips and more observations about the Northern California angling scene. Anyway, this is Kel Kellogg signing off. Thanks, folks.